Look, it was today in 1978. And you will remember, sir, because you made your debut in this test match. History, we beat England for the first time. Welcome to the show, John. Thanks, Martin. Um, yes, it's um, it's a long time ago, although um, it, it sort of seems like yesterday. Yeah, 45 years, mate. Now, we're talking to Richard Box shortly, and, of course, Stephen made his debut as well, and, and Richard and his family were there every minute of every day of the five days. So he told me... You nicked the first ball, and the umpire didn't call it. Is that true? Well, I got a bit of, little bit of luck early on, um, so that, that's probably uh, a fair assessment. Okay. Um, but I'd been um, I've been dreaming of playing for New Zealand oh, ever since I was a kid, um, and uh, you know, it was it was one of those things. Um, we we actually started. Uh, late, uh, it, it was a huge northerly blowing, and play was delayed because of bad light on the first day of the of the match. And I remember driving to the the game. I was rooming with Jumbo Anderson, my opening partner. Uh, we came in as Holden. <laughs> um, we actually got lost. <laughs> yeah, driving, how can you get lost? You uh, go to the basin. Well, you have to ask Jumbo that. Um, Martin, because I was quite nervous, but um, blazer and tie, um, and your first game for New Zealand, um, which you know, um, growing up in a, a Canterbury farm, um, listening to commentary, really, that was my cricket education when I was very young, and, and eventually getting to play uh, your first Test match, it was uh, it was a big day. Enormous, and the 55 you made in that first innings was a heck of a contribution. It was a low-scoring game, but you know, just facing guys like Bob Willis and that, as ferocious as those guys were, you got boycott, you got both of them. I mean, these names roll off the tongue. Legends that you're playing against. Plus, we'd never beaten them, John. So there's a hell of a lot at stake. Yeah, well, I, I had a, a bit of an advantage because I was, um, I was at the time, um, I just finished my first year or second year actually as being a, a county professional with Derbyshire so I had three of my teammates in the opposition um, Bob Taylor was the keeper uh, Jeff, Jeff Miller uh, and Mike Hendrick who was one of their attack uh, so I, I played against most of these um, bowlers in county cricket um, you're right it was a real tough wicket I, I always look back on that day and think God I wish it had been a a better wicket, I might have got more runs, and and the weather was quite a factor because um, the northerly the, the pitch used to go north to south in those days. Yes, did, and yeah. Bob Willis opened the batting, I mean opened the bowling with his wind behind him, and Jumbo kindly offered me first strike. <laughs> uh, I negotiated the first over, um, and after that incident, which was the first ball of the match, I think. Um, Willis bounced me twice, um, and they both went for four buys, and then he bowled a, a no ball. So at the end of the first over, we were nine without loss, and officially I hadn't laid bat on ball. It, it, it was, wow. as it turned out, one of the one of the more productive first overs I'd, I'd ever faced in my life for, for New Zealand. John Wright is with us, absolute legend in New Zealand cricket. Today in 1978, people, we beat England for the first time. What did it? You know, you look back at it now. You know the significance at the time. Did did all of you really, really fully appreciate what that meant? I mean, the celebrations. You look at the pictures, and it looks as though you did. Did it? Did it take long to sink in? Oh no! I mean, Bevan Congdon was playing in that that match. Um, I remember going up in the lift um, with Walter Hadley um, after the first day's play, and I think Walter at that time was. Chairman or President of New Zealand Cricket, um, we all knew that a lot of the players that had gone before us had never had the opportunity to have a win against England, um, and there'd been some very, very fine teams and some fine cricketers. So, for particularly me and Stephen um, in our first test, um, it was sort of. I don't know if I can put it into words, but a bit like a holy grail, really. You know, it was it was um, it was so special. I remember sharing a glass of something with with Bocky and, and saying, "Well, we we should really retire. Really, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this." Um, now we we sort of appreciated it um, 
And um, at one stage, it looked like we were going to lose the game. England needed a very small total. Uh, but it was a tough wicket. It wasn't the best batting lineup that England's that had that toured these shores. And Richard Collins bowled Jeff Boycott uh, at the commencement early on in the second innings. And we built that momentum um, in that last session. And it, it, Basin was glorious. It wasn't. It wasn't full or by any means, but it, it, it was a fine afternoon. The wicket was up and down, and every time we got a wicket, that the siren would sound. It was the sort of I don't know. I don't think the siren's there anymore. No, it's not. No. And and we we sort of sighed our way through the English batting order, and and then you know we we knew that if, if it didn't rain. We only had a couple of wickets to get to get to that win, so it sort of sunk in overnight, really. Yeah, that last day, yeah, of course, um, it, it was a delayed start, and then just a couple of wickets. The Collins thing, everyone who was there, or everyone watching it, remembers that just an incredible Yorker that he bowled and and removed the rock boycott, and you know to to achieve that nineteen seventy eight to actually get a win against them, especially after they skittled us for 26 in 1955 and everything else, and Australia wouldn't play us in test matches. Yeah, it really did yeah, kick exactly. it, did, it kick-started everything, didn't it? I mean, we look at the Black Caps now. You weren't even called the Black Caps back then, were you? No, you're just no, a New Zealand we were, men's team. You were a New Zealand team. I remember sitting in the barbers. I had a haircut before the second second test, um, and they'd forgot to send me my ticket because it was in Christchurch and I was playing, I was in Gisborne in those days, I was playing for Northern Districts, they forgot to send me the ticket, so I sort of had to ring up and say, look, I hope I'm in the second test. And, but I remember sitting in a barber's shop in Christchurch and a bloke walked in and he was having his hair cut and he was talking to the, the hairdresser and the hairdresser said, oh, that was a great win for our boys in the cricket, you know, last week against England. And the, the fellow in the chair said, oh, it's probably a fluke. <laughs> that was sort of the way it was I mean um, and, and you know like for us sometimes a draw was a good result in those days you know we weren't expected but that grew over the 80s but it was um, it was very special and and it, personally you know I, I just look back and, and think how fortunate I was you know to, to sort of to, to, to play in that game. Devlin. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. The platform. Today in 1978, I know there were 95,000 people at the basin that day. Um, every single person in Wellington was there. You were actually there for all five days of this test, the very first time that we beat England. Why were you there? Well, I think there were six days because I think we had a rest day in those days. But, uh, yeah, my brother Stephen was making his test debut, so our entire family flew up, which was a, uh, a exercise on its own, uh, to Wellington, and we, we stayed down the road. I can't remember what motel. It wasn't far away, within walking distance, um, and, uh, and we were there for every day. So it was, um, it was a fantastic test to, to watch for obvious reasons. What do you remember most about it? The oh, the excitement, um, the the one the one flash of memory I always remember uh, was the puff of dust as um, boycott fell over that Richard Collins Yorker um, in the England uh, second innings, the, the last innings of the game, and um, and that started everything off. And the whole crowd roared and getting rid of boycott. He'd been there for about eighty days in the first innings. Mm. Um, it was so hard to get rid of. Um, in fact, even England couldn't get rid of him in the second test at Christchurch. Both of them were sent out to run him out. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, That's uh, right. So it started the dominoes. And the other things, are, I just remember um, a re- really, a really cool catch from Warren Lee's low down by his right angle with, with one glove. Uh, Dag Parker, John Parker juggling a, a, um, a, a, an edge behind and then reclaiming it. Um, just the excitement. Uh, old guys in walk socks and toweling hats, you know, jumping up and down and cheering, the Hadley chant, the siren going on in the background. There was a lot of wind in the first few days, Marty. Um, and um, and I remember, um, I think John Wright has uh, confessed that he nicked the first ball and that he faced in the game uh, and was given not out because I'm pretty sure Ralph Gardner, the umpire, would never have heard the nick 
um, and that, that enraged Bob Willis, the bowler, and um, sent him off on a uh, on a really uh, uh, hostile spell. Uh, that was pretty difficult for everyone, I think. But Wrighty got through to a, a ground out of 50, and um, and they put some runs on the board, and it was uh, it was uh, all go from there. Not a high scoring test. Two two eight for us, two one five for them in reply. One hundred and twenty three. You would have thought that they would have knocked that off, but yeah, Collins bowls boycott, and then we come back the next day. Um, what on the last day, needing four or five wickets, wasn't it? Oh, um, yeah, no, on the last day, we, we really only, yeah, maybe only two or three. Brian Rose had a broken arm, Richard Hadley. He was the one guy that, Richard, I think Richard Hadley may have ended with six or five wickets. Um, he, he, he bowled beautifully. Um, and um, uh, Brian Rose was sent to hospital. He, he got one on his elbow, and he came back, and uh, um, they got rid of him, and it was over really quickly. It was a wee bit of a anti-climax on that last morning because it rained first and that, that that actually got us a wee bit worried and the, the the start was delayed and then it was wrapped up pretty quickly within the hour really so uh, it was the day before where everything happened and England were left in, in tatters and uh, it just it, it just was amazing the ground had about sort of 500 people in it and as you say at the end it had about 94,000 people in it <laughs> Uh, it's yeah. incredible. Usually, you, you, in New Zealand cricket, you have this phenomenon of people charging to get out of the grounds, um, so because they don't want to watch anymore. Um, but this time, it was um, the turnstiles were thick with people trying to get in on that on that second last day. I, the only thing that I saw that was any kind of anything close to it was when Brendan McCullum was hitting his three hundred at the basin, and remember that occasion, and that you know all of a sudden it was in the morning, and there was just the whole bank was full of people in suit and tie, who'd obviously just taken a morning off work to come and watch something historic. The historic nature of this, though, is that why it's so important? Is that why we continually talk about it, continually go back and remember oh, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, as a person who's watched cricket for a long time. The test victories came pretty slowly for New Zealand. Um, it took 26 years to get our first one. Um, and, and even then, uh, it was a long time between between drinks as they came. So the first test win ever against England was hugely momentous. No one was expecting it. Um, and, uh, and, it and it sort of came through uh, um, um, different ways as well. I was so proud... Um, uh, watching my brother make his debut, and uh, and he, he got a wicket. He bowled, I think, Graham Root with a full toss. Um, and, uh, in in England second innings, when all hell was breaking loose, he he uh, caught a skied top edge from Ian Botham, who went to hook Hadley, um, and then he ran out Bob Taylor, which was he was under the helmet and had to run back uh, side onto the stumps and uh, direct hit run out, which was. Um, you know, it really, really set things uh, alight. And uh, so it, it was also really personal. Mm. Uh, I was just so, so happy for him. And does it go down as one of our greatest ever test victories because of the historic nature of it? Would you put it in the top oh, five yeah. of all time? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were just going through a purple patch at that stage. We'd beaten Australia for the first time in Christchurch a couple of years earlier. Remember... Uh, uh, Turner made the centuries in both innings in Christchurch and we beat Australia against all odds. So that was the first time we'd beaten Australia. We we, we beat England um, and we were starting to be taken seriously for the first time on the world scene. So it was incredibly important in terms of the uh, um, reputation of the New Zealand team. Jeff Howth uh, was just hitting sublime form at that stage. Uh, he went over to England and I think... Uh, I think he scored a century at Christchurch, a century at Auckland in the third test, went over to England uh, that winter with the New Zealand team, and pre I think he was dismissed for 97 or 94. He almost scored four centuries in a row against them, so he was in, uh, he was in great form. But uh, also that England team, was, it was pretty handy. Uh, Bob Willis, as I said, Ian Botham, Jeff Boycott. Um, Mike Brearley had been the captain or was going to be the captain, but he got his arm broken in Pakistan, so Boycott took over the captaincy. But uh, they were a crack side. And what does Stephen remember of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's an old fogey, he probably hardly remembers anything now. Right. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I had him, he was up in Auckland uh, a while back, and I put on. 
the TV because his kids were there with him and I said, you probably haven't seen this and you can go onto YouTube and get that game. Um, and, uh, what, uh, and I was showing his kids what, what happened and uh, he, he took it all pretty much uh, yeah, uh, in his stride and everything, but the kids were goggle-eyed because um, I don't think anyone expected that uh, he would be able to, you know, the, the run-out was incredibly yeah, athletic amazing. piece yeah. of work. Yeah. Uh, Oh, when I looked at it again, I was thinking, jeepers, you know, that, that actually stands it stands the test of time. It looks good even now. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, um, so uh, what he remembers, oh, I think he'll remember everything about it, really, uh, if, if, if you um, if you probe him on it. The, um, uh, he had a wee, bit of a, uh, a wee bit of a running argument with boycott right through the whole game. Um, I think it was Hadley that got... Um, he got boy, he got a ball to rise quite sharply, to bounce quite steeply, and took uh, the shoulder of Boycott's bat and deflected into his eye. And I think Stephen might have rem- uh, mentioned something about um, uh, between innings about how his mascara was, was running. <laughs> um, and, and Boycott, Boycott said, "We've got some pretty fast bowlers too, so just watch out, Sonny." So there was a bit of a bit of banter going around, and it was quite, you know, like it was a full-on test match. John Reid, John R. Reid, um, I think he had a glass of champagne afterwards, and he he was known to be sort of a teetotal in those days. Although I think he did break out a couple of times before that, but uh, uh, there were grown men crying, Muddy. It was quite amazing. Okay, so five full days you were there for every single ball of it. Remarkable, yeah. eh? What a great memory to have, man. Oh, it was just fantastic, and I still remember we were lining up to go in through the gate with our, our money to, you know, to pay the ticket, and um, and uh, then we just heard this huge appeal, and it was the first ball of the game. We thought, oh my God, we're we're already in trouble, and it was then that Ralph Gardner had turned down the appeal from Bob Willis, and and John Wright survived, and, and quite a funny story later on uh, when uh, John Wright was signing his book and selling his book, Indian Summers. Apparently Ralph Gardner turned up for um, for that event and had the ball from the game and got um, got John Wright to sign it. So uh, 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 he, he'd kept it all that time. So uh, yeah, just just incredible memories.